Telephone time. Telephone time with the stories of John Nesbitt. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is a tough world, far tougher than many of us dare to realize. Under the surface of what we call normal life, there's a whole other life of people beyond the pale of respectability. People who don't belong, people without love, people who have no roots and home, and family and affection. The sort of people we find it very easy to classify as delinquent. What is most hard, most appalling, is when these people are children. And our story is about a lot of such young people. We call it Alice's Wedding Gown. As you drive up the highway and approach the beautiful grounds, you see that it is a school for girls. As you look at it, it has all the amenities of a pleasant finishing school. But it's really a corrective institution, a sort of prison, if you will. Well, look who's here. Hi, Patty. Home for good? Welcome back. Hey, you OK, Patty? Well, look who's home from Judy. Hey, Patty, when'd you get the I knew you'd be back and get soon, you all right. <laughs> Boy, it's good to see you. no reason? That's right. Is it? She's talking. And you're not? I've got nothing to say. Go to segregation cottage. I'll have to report this to the superintendent. Yes, ma'am. That includes you, Dolores. But I didn't do nothing. I told Go you to segregation she... cottage until we get to the bottom of this. Yes, ma'am. If you hit me, I'll, I'll do a lot worse if you don't get out of my hair. I was just kidding. I don't want any more of it. In two weeks, I graduate the high school. That makes me do to get out of here two or three months after that. You do anything to foul me up and I'll... I won't. I won't. If I get called into Miss Perry's office and hear my times and stretch one minute more, you're going to be awfully sorry, Dolores. Awfully sorry. The three weeks after the fight were problem weeks, not only for Alice, but for the head of the school and for the visiting gentleman from Sacramento. Well, Mr. Cullen, what do you think we should do about Alice? If it hadn't been for that fight three weeks ago, I'd feel safer about planning her future. Well, Miss Perry, the California Youth Authority didn't send me here to teach, but to learn. Four months of field service, so that I get some idea of the actual problems of our institutions. This is actual enough. I was planning on day parole for her, finding her a job in Ventura during the day. Oh, what kind of job? Sewing, light assembly work. There are several plants in town that take our girls. No, no, Miss Perry. It seems to me that she's reserved and withdrawn enough. I have a feeling she might be helped more in some job where she'd meet people. 
Perhaps. But if she blows up so easily, it would be asking her employer to take some risk. No, I think I know one who would. Oh? There's a diner I've eaten at in town. It's run by a man named Marcos. He and I have developed quite a friendship. He's always complaining about the lack of waitresses. Alice? Well, she could easily handle the job. I'd like to ask him if it's all right with you. Yes, it's all right, Mr. Cullen. As long as you make it clear to him that she's long on brains and short on temper. I'll make it very clear, Miss Perry. Well, one thing a diner always needs is waitress. Even when I got too many, I ain't got enough. Uh, so send the girl here. I just want to make it clear again, Mr. Marcos. It's clear, Mr. Cullen. You say she got temper, but also she got brains and work good, huh? Me, I only got temper, so I can use her. Thanks a lot, Mr. Marcos. She'll be here tomorrow morning. Oh, fine. Martin. You? Yes, sir. Did Mr. Cullen, he don't talk so good, huh? What? He say you got brains, he say you work good, but he don't tell me you're so pretty. Why? Ain't you, Nikki? For a girl. She like girls. Nikki, he's my kid. When his mother's busy, he's around here. He's a big help. Oh, I'm sure he is. Uh, you like kids? Oh, oh, yes. I don't like girls. Nikki. They're mushy. Are you mushy? No. Not lately. Then maybe I'll like you. And yeah, now maybe you better shut up. Uh, look, Alice. Uh, go in the back dressing rooms. Four or five uniforms. Pick out one that fits and then come back. I'll show you what to do. And I'll help. Yeah, he'll help. During the weeks that followed, the shell that Alice had built around herself slowly began to dissolve. She began to reach out to others and found an acceptance among them. Between herself and little Nikki, there began to grow a kind of wonderful relationship. As if for the first time in her young life, Alice Martin had discovered a family, perhaps a little brother. Thanks, Nikki. Now what can I do? Oh, you better not start anything new. Your father will be by to pick you up in a minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you think I like summer camp? Oh, of course you will. Well, maybe. But I'd rather stay and help you. Help? Maybe Alice be glad you're not under the feet all summer. Oh, no, Mr. Marcos. Nikki's been a big help. <laughs> yeah. Give you bigger help when you come back from camp with lots of new muscles, huh? Come on, Nikki. Bye, Nikki. Bye, Alice. Back in an hour, Alice. Yeah, bye, Mr. Marcos. You like kids, huh? What? Kids. You like them, huh? Sure. Well, then, how about putting up a container of coffee to go for this big baby, huh? Sure. Cream and sugar. Right. Nice kid. The whole family's nice. You like families. Don't you? Sure, I come from one myself. Wish I did. What? Nothing. Hey, why don't you quit this job and uh, have a family of your own? Is that an orphan? Well, it might be. If I wasn't married to that rig outside and the finance company that owns it. You've got your own truck, huh? Yep. Dover Express Company. One truck, one driver. Me, Johnny Dover. How long have you two been married? We're not, really. Just engaged for seven months. Eleven months, she becomes all mine. And no finance company to come between us. Then, maybe I might think about taking me another wife. Oh, bigger me, huh? Might be fun. You're a nice kid. Yes, I am. You, uh, work here regular? Yes. You come through regular? Pretty regular. 
I'll see you in uh, a week or two, huh? I'll be here. I'll be here. you lay off her. Why don't you mind your own business? What did Alice ever do to you that you didn't start? I don't like her. She's stuck up. She's been too darn happy lately, walking on a cloud. Great reasons. Now I know one thing. That dog in the manger wasn't a boy dog. It was a... Here she comes! What's with the nails? You think you're going someplace? Just because a girl's in here, she doesn't need to grow sloppy. Your boyfriend wouldn't like it. What boyfriend? It so happens I'm quite popular with men. Ain't I, Fran? Uh-huh. You call those goons you used to go out with men? They probably ain't even dry behind the ears yet. Huh, that's what you think. If you ever went out with a real man, he'd put such a curl in your toes, you'd be walking on your heels. Says you. Now, me, when I go out with a man, I put the curl in his toes. Now, Alice. It's all right, Gail. Some people think the childish tricks are going to make me blow up. They're all wrong. Nothing's going to keep me from going home on time. What home? You ain't seen your old lady in years, and it's even money you don't know who your old man is. I meant my home. A week after I get out of here, I'm getting married. Married? Yes. Did any of those curling toes ever ask you to marry them? You mean for real, Alice? Are you kidding? What kind of a guy? Oh, what did what you mean? Like? What does he look like? Tell us. Oh, slow down. I'll take one at a time. Are you really getting married, Alice? Really? When? I told you. When I get out. Why don't you get married here? In the school? Why not? We could plan everything. Even have a reception. I don't think Miss Perry would let me. I'll ask her. I bet she says okay. Yeah, she's not bad for us. Well, what about the guy? Will he want to get married in a place like this? What's the difference? If it's real, true love. Shut up. It would be wonderful. How about it? I'll ask Miss Perry if you'll ask him. It'll be the most wonderful thing that's ever happened here. All right. I'll ask him. If Miss Perry says it's all right. It certainly is, Dolores. If the young man is willing, you can tell Alice we'll be more than happy to have the wedding here. Did you see him? Did you ask him? What did he say? I saw him. I asked him. And Johnny said he'd marry me any time. Any place. Anywhere. Oh, oh now we can really start making oh, oh, it's the greatest wedding there ever was. A wedding for all of us. Yes. Can we get the pattern? Oh. And yeah. someone just said she can get anyone in the magazine and she'll even help us in making it. Oh, great. Oh, oh, great. Then oh, that's, that's the one. Oh, okay. Agreed. Right. Right. Oh. Listen, now listen. Yeah. Alice doesn't know a thing about this until the gown is finished. It's got to be a big surprise. Oh, oh Charlie, wait to see her face when she's leaving. And it became not only Alice's wedding, but the wedding of all of them. Each girl saw herself in that gown and saw a vision of what life might be for her. Thank you, Miss Perry. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, Mr. Cullen. Oh, that's all right. Wedding business? Is there anything around this school that isn't wedding business? I'll have you know that I've been officially asked to be matron of honor. Well, congratulations. I'm going to give the bride away. Good. <laughs> now, uh, what did you want to see me for? Oh, oh yes. Uh, have you seen Alice's boyfriend in the diner? No. No, I've never caught him on one of his trips through town. Oh, well, I'd like to talk to him before the wedding. I've asked Alice to bring him here, but she always forgets. Well, I can understand that. They've probably got more important things to discuss. 
I could leave a message in the diner to have him call when he comes through. Then do it, Mr. Cullen. I really do want to talk to him. I've been a real stinker to you. That's all right, Dolores. That's all in the past. In spite of that, you're doing something wonderful for me, for all of us. Getting married here at the school. It's like we were getting married. And since we'd want it to be in style and a real wedding dress, well, all of us pitched in and made one for you. Well? Say something, it's real. No! No! was going to be. Nobody asked me to marry them. No one ever would. You say something. Do something. Didn't you hear what I said? Sit down, Alice. say you were getting married? Because I want to. I want to so much. I want to belong to somebody. Be somebody. And I did. For a minute. I really did. Really? Make believe. It Alice. wasn't make believe. It was real. He kissed me. This Dober boy. No. Nicky. Nicky. Marco's son. About seven or eight. He kissed me. Just because he wanted to. He really liked me. He loved me. Johnny was there. He kidded me about liking kids and... how maybe I should have a family like everyone else. Belong to somebody. Have people belonging to you. I want to belong to somebody. Go on, Alice. Dover never really proposed to you? I don't know. I mean, I imagined he was going to. I imagined he would. And suddenly, I, I imagined he did. And it was real. He did. Alice. It was so real. I told everyone and... It made it realer. But Alice, when the girls started planning... 
was the most wonderful part of all. A beautiful dream that was true. He was so happy for me. And I was happy for them. I got all mixed up. Plans for the wedding. Laughing. Talk. As long as it was talk, it was real. Then just now... What happened now, Alice? He made a gown for me. A wedding gown. The most beautiful. Katie said, say something. It's real. Suddenly it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> All right, Alice. All right. I can't I told you. I can't tell them. I can't. I don't want to see them again. I can never face them. That's a dream, Alice. to face them sometime. They're real. And that dream, Alice, do you want it always to be a dream or do you want it to come true someday? I want it. I want it with all my heart. Enough to face reality? To face those who've dreamed with you? I think so, too. No! I lied. I'm not getting married. We know. I made it all up. It was a dream. It was a dream for all of us. We all have dreams of some sort or another. We want you to keep it anyway. Sure, Alice, keep, keep it. it. Maybe someday you'll really get married. Maybe all of us will. Ladies and gentlemen, seated here beside me is Mr. Heman G. Stark, director of the California Youth Authority one of whose responsibilities is the Ventura School for Girls. I wonder, Mr. Stark, whether you can tell us without violating confidence or rules, what happened to Alice afterward? Yes, Dr. Baxter, I would be pleased to. Since Alice has been released from the institution, she's married, she has her own home, she has a youngster, a husband, and everything that goes with a good life. She's married. I hope she had a chance to wear that famous gown. Yes, she certainly did. Uh, Mr. Stark, can you tell us something in general about this whole problem of juvenile delinquency? Well, everyone is concerned about it today, and certainly juvenile delinquency is a community problem. It's a, it's a problem that involves all of the community, the church, the school, the home. And so in order to attack it properly, we must deal with all of these agencies. Now, we try to find in each of these youngsters his good qualities and try to develop and build on those so that when he returns on parole to his home in the community, he then can have an opportunity to become a good citizen. And belong to a world and have a part. Yes, of course. Well, best, best of luck to you in this tremendous enterprise. We're very grateful and happy that you could be with us on this program. Thank you.